Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Alright, there's another item. This is a teardown, because this is actually my old Wi-Fi unit for my wireless internet connection. And um, this is the modem which connects to the main CPE on the roof. It does PPOE connections and stuff like that to the CPE. And we had a lightning strike a little while ago and it blew this up. This stopped working. And I've had a replacement given to me obviously. Now I'm going to pull this apart and have a look inside and see what's actually in there. I don't think we're going to see anything wrong but uh, it might be an interesting pull apart to see what's going on. Might be some parts we can salvage, who knows. Let's have a look. Obviously the IP address and the password stuff like this are all meaningless because they're not used anymore. It's all been reconfigured. There's no point looking those up. Trying to get into it. Yeah, let's use my tweezers to see if I can just pop it over a little bit. Okay, there we go. It's just about there. Inches off. Well, there's not a lot on that side, is there? Of course, there's optional ports here which aren't installed. One, there you are. Or buttons. The buttons. The buttons over this side. So, obviously, there's an option there too for buttons. Here's your port on the side there, as you saw. So, an antenna. Right there. That's your actual Wi Fi antenna. Now, can I pop this right out of the board? There you go. Antenna out. Try and get the antenna out. Come on, it's locked in place. Here we go. Right, here's the other side. This looks a bit more interesting. So they've got those Ethernet connections there. I'm quite sure what those actually do. I really should look into those. They, um, you see them quite commonly. They're, um, I, know, I think there's some kind of isolation or something. Or conversion system, maybe it's impedance conversion. I don't know. I don't know. I, have to, I really should look at what they are. Look that up one day. So, some kind of chip here. What's that? Broadcom chipset. Samsung, probably memory there. This is over here. Another Broadcom chip. And one over here. Which I don't know the manufacturer of. There's no real marking there, just some generic IDs in there. So, this is the phone line connections, which go up through here. There's some isolation caps, little transformer, phone line transformer. And also, this is all the Ethernet port stuff there. That is another transformer just here, which seems to be going to this chip here. So I'm not quite sure what that's doing, it's going to this line. So maybe that's supposed to be a protection system. Or maybe it's just a smaller version of one of those, who knows. Could be. Because that's the main um, the WAN connection. So those are all LAN ports, that's the WAN connection. They're free of course, what's your few inductors around the place. There's not actually a lot to say about this really is there. Uh, just trying to see if I can see anything of consequence. 25 megahertz crystal. So I'm intrigued by the fact these button positions are over here. What option is that that's not there? It's also another section over here which is unpopulated. You have to speculate what that is. It's a crystal position. So it's probably some micro that goes in there. So let's look at this antenna position. It goes over to that pad just there. Is from here, so it's actually got connectors here for antennas to be plugged in, and yet they've got this one soldered directly in, which is interesting. So I could actually have two antennas on it, but they've only got one populated. And they're using that one there as an antenna, too, by the looks of it. 
the other way they've got that ball ground plane pull back and there's a little, I'm see a little trace just through there I'll get it in chart. there's a little trace right there so that is actually an antenna that's coming through that path there's some capacitors there path comes from that connector through there and down so that's also an antenna also yes yeah, so there's not much here much to them you know there's not really much to investigate now the WAN connection is what goes to the CPE so this one here is what will go to the antenna on the roof via a PoE adapter stuff like that so um, this doesn't do PoE so let's try and look at this goes up to there so through holes that's come up that side yep yeah, there they are so it's got some pairs they are actually pairs I don't think you can see it there unfortunately lighting's not quite good enough for that let's get a torch now you can see as hopefully you can see I don't know if it's going to be focused probably too close there's pairs going up to that little transformer just there so that's gigabit capability because it's got two pairs I think those are going to be RXTX, that will be RXTX, I mean, someone, that might be good, but there are two pairs there and there's two there as well, which come down, so maybe it is gigabit capable because it has, has got four pairs so it's using all four pairs, so maybe it is gigabit capable if it's using two pairs only, then it's, it's only uh, 100 megabit gigabit requires four pairs so it goes to this transformer, up to there, up to that chip, wherever that is so I'm guessing that the connection issues I was having is actually for this chip here being blown. It could have damaged the transformer, possibly, but um, obviously that's some kind of isolation. But this, there would have been a big power surge, and it's um, it could have damaged that chip. Well, I could have scrambled the memory on on the chips or something. Could have maybe damaged the RAM, the uh, flash, whatever it is, some kind of thing, some kind of memory. But yeah, um, not a huge amount to see. I mean, visually you can't see anything there, which is bad. It's not the cleanest bloody soldering, but you know, yeah, you know, it's densely packed test points and stuff like that around the place. I mean, I wouldn't know to start with when it comes to fixing this thing. But as, as far as spare parts, well, I've got a nice DC jack there, nice little switch, a couple of little press switches, some inductors. Now, there's a few parts I'm going to rescue from that. Megahertz crystals, 25 megahertz crystals, two of them. Once you once ones for that chip, ones for that chip. There's a few rescuable things on there. I wonder why that capacitor there is painted red. That's interesting. Anyway, so I thought I'd just show you that. I'm not too funny with the actual engineering aspects of these things. Someone will probably know and be able to fill it then. What's your big memory chip on the back there? Toshiba chip. So this ZL88601, according to the data sheet, which I just looked up, it's a dual channel wideband auto battery switching voice port device. So it's meant for phone lines and communication devices, that's what that is. What's that memory? So I'm gonna bother looking that up. So let's look up some of these other things and see what we can actually find, shall we? So I looked up this chip here and it's a K4T51163QJ-BCE6. Now I found a data sheet for the for BC7, so I'm guessing it's a slightly newer version of the chip. And it's a 512 megabyte uh JDI DDR2 SD RAM. So it's obviously it's an actual RAM for you for when it's running. And obviously this one here is the sort of standard flash memory. Nothing too exciting there. So, and that Broadcom chip there, didn't get any response for that one. I haven't looked this one up. I don't know what that is. So uh yeah. Not a lot to say really. I thought you might be interested. Hope you enjoyed it. Any input, please do. Give comments below. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Um much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting me to help me buy items for mailbag or projects to work on, you know, bits of test equipment to repair, that kind of thing, any money that goes goes towards that is helpful because it is expensive buying test equipment to do repairs on, especially if I'm not actually going to be using it that much or it's something I could do without. Or, you know, as is in most cases, you can do without things. So having a Patreon supporters and people that donate to me via PayPal is, is very helpful. So if you're interested in helping me support me and, um, you know, contribute to the channel, um, then please check out my Patreon page, my PayPal donation options, which are down in the, in the description down there. Click on the Show More tab, this is down there. So, um, thank you very much for not supporting me. I enjoy making videos, enjoy showing what I'm playing around with. It was just originally I was going to video bits of what I'm doing at the time. I was, you know, if I'm working on something, I'll do a video of that and slap it up. 
which was going to be rather random and erratic. And I've ended up basically turning my life into doing YouTube videos and buying things and trying to create content to keep you guys entertained. Yeah, if you want to support me, that's great. Um, of course, that would certainly be appreciated because this is an expensive hobby. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Click the bell icon. Bye.